What's good? Today I am creating a monthly reset video. I'm going to be going over reflection of last month. I'm going to be setting my goals, prioritizing, sharing how I manage some of my mental health, and whatever else comes about. So stick around and don't forget to subscribe because this is going to be a new series. So if you like it, you can catch the next one. Monthly resets can be and serve a lot of different purposes. I tend to vary what I do each month, but something that I always do is prioritize, kind of create little month containers of what I'm going to focus on. So some of those are more goals and some of those are more honestly like task management. So with ADHD, I've got poor working memory. I've also got anxiety. So to me, these lists help me not only prioritize what I'm going to focus on, they help me avoid decision fatigue later in the month. They help me minimize perfectionism and like not be trying to do everything all at once. I really like the motto, you can do everything, but you can't do it all at the same time, which is so hard for me to actually practice. And so creating these little time containers where I'm not only saying, okay, here are the things I'm going to do, but here are the things that I'm not going to focus on has been very, very life-changing. I've been doing this for years. So let's see how I did for July, shall we? My month is divided into personal life, that's what the P is, and and then my business, which is what the B is. So for July, what I set for myself was my parents' visit, which was an event, but also included like getting ready and making plans and things like that. So I did that, very good. Triple A I was supposed to set up, which I didn't. So I will be giving that an arrow which just means that I'm going to be dragging it into August because that's a priority instead of putting an arrow that way in which I would have put it back onto my brain dump. Prioritize dance. I've been taking adult dance classes, which have been so fun, and I definitely crushed this. Like, I've been going, like, three times a week and just doing a really good job with it, so I'm super proud of myself, and I've been having so much fun. Stretching more. I think when I wrote this, I meant, like, more at home. Home, <laughs> and I haven't quite done that but I have a little bit more and since I've been taking so many dance classes I have so I'm gonna give myself half a credit <laughs> and then I'm gonna put an arrow to like continue this into August for my business I just have it divided into like the different parts of my business so I'm a life coach for people with ADHD and a content creator and educator so metamorphosis is my group coaching program that is starting in August so I was supposed to advertise get five clients and set up slack and teachable I got a little behind on this with my parents visiting but I did advertise I got some clients not five so I'm gonna give myself part credit and then we're gonna continue this the next couple of weeks and then slack and teachable I I did not get set up but I'm doing this Friday. Friday is still going to be in July so that will get done. Next I have my one-on-one -on -one coaching program. My goal was to get one client which I did. Then I've got the CEG which stands for the Collective Empowerment Group. That is my monthly membership. My main goal here was to really continue brainstorming so I'm working on member growth, member retention, and member engagement. So I did a ton of brainstorming with my VA Jamie and we we set a lot of goals and a lot of plans so that's exciting and I definitely started sharing more I want to continue doing that I haven't uploaded the recording that I need to yet but I will do that before the month ends and then I have another task on there that I literally don't know what it says so somebody help me in the comments what even is this change old CEG out of show 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 what the hell Someone help me, what did I mean? <laughs> JOTB stands for Jack Outside the Box, my YouTube channel. I wrote a little note to keep going because just to be totally honest, YouTube has been really challenging for me. It's felt a little discouraging putting like so much time and effort into creating videos and just like questioning if I'm creating the con the like type of content that is helpful, questioning the direction I want to go, questioning if it's helpful. Um, I think I had slightly unrealistic expectations about growth 
I got really lucky when I started my Authentically ADHD Instagram that is at 60k where it kind of took off really quickly and I know that's not normally the case and I'm like embarrassed to even say it but I think I was expecting more people to come over from my Instagram onto YouTube and I think I was just expecting it to grow a little faster and it's not really that the numbers are that important to me. I love YouTube. I've been a viewer of YouTube forever and I love the idea of being able to inspire people and like hang out with you and like build that community and just like it's hard balancing it with my full-time business and kind of like intentionally taking time and energy away from activities that are money producing to create YouTube videos that are not money producing and it just feels like a really long journey and so I've been kind of like a little in comparison mode and just questioning things but I wrote a note to keep going because it is super aligned with what I want to be doing so I'm going to keep at it. I really hope these videos are helping folks and I just really hope I continue to like get my footing and feel out what feels really good for me and really good for you as a viewer. I also really don't want to sound ungrateful for all of you who have subscribed and comment and like my videos and engage with me. It is what is keeping me going here. So you all are so much more than a number to me. It means so much to me that you care enough to follow along and that my videos are supportive to you. So thank you so much for being here, you are exactly the reason that I'm gonna keep going. So I appreciate you a lot. My goal is to create two videos minimum. Normally I do a video every week, but with my parents visiting, it was a little funky. I got three videos done, so I'm proud of myself and I'll be back to uh, hopefully four next month. By the way, there's finally sun here, which I'm so happy about. <laughs> Okay, I finished my August goals and prioritizing. So let's see here. I've got my friend Rachel visiting. It's a circle because those are like events. And I just like keeping that in mind so I you know, know how to prioritize around that. I know for myself when I have visitors, even though I love it, I need some time before to kind of like prepare and then some time after to recharge. I am going to continue to prioritize dance. So for me, that means going to two to four classes a week and practicing a lot at home. My goal is to perform with my adult hip hop class in September. I haven't performed in anything like dance or gymnastics or cheerleading when I was younger since like high school. So it feels really scary, but I really want to do it in September. So I am going to be practicing and prioritizing this. It's really good for me to have a goal like that and to have like a focus area for my mental health. I'm going to be stretching more at home. So I specified that this time and I wrote down to look into a tax letter. I got a really confusing letter for California. I got one letter saying I owed $800 and then another letter like five days later saying I am owed $800 from them. They then sent me an $800 check. So I need to look into if I still owe money. Taxes as a business owner are not fun. <laughs> I dragged and dropped the triple A task that I did not do last week or last month over into this month. I really need to do that. And then I also put practice ERP. I don't know if I took a picture before or after I wrote that, but ERP is exposure and response prevention. It is a treatment for anxiety and OCD. So I explained a bit more about it in my mental health journey, which I will tag above and put in the description box, but you're exposing yourself to your triggers and you're not responding it with compulsions or in the typical way. So I'm gonna to continue to really prioritize that and practice that so I can get better and face my fears. And then business, in the business world, lots going on. So for Metamorphosis, my group coaching program, I need to just get like a completed five clients in the next... Did you hear that? I thought there was an animal behind me, but something just fell. <laughs> okay, so I need to 
get those clients in the next couple weeks. Once we get all of those people, we'll be voting on a day and time. I'll be getting out the welcome stuff and all of that jazz. That's probably not too exciting to you. I want to get one new one-on-one -on -one client. And then for the collective empowerment group, I'm going to really continue increasing my advertisements around it. We'll be starting up a BIPOC group and we're going to be getting the free trial back up, which I'm excited about, continuing brainstorming and improve our notification system. And then for Jack Outside the Box, so this YouTube channel, I want to do weekly videos. I anticipate that being a little challenging just during the week that my friend Rachel is here. So I will give myself grace if it ends up being three videos this month, but I'm going to really aim for four. If you have any topics or anything that you're interested in, comment below and I will do my best to create something. And I'm hoping to hit 500 subscribers this month. So obviously you can't control that. I know it's out of my control, but what I can control is just like continuing doing my best posting and the, all of the things. So thank you to everyone who's here and I hope to see some new people too. And that is that. Those are my August... I don't even really call them goals. I think like more of like my priorities, like my focus areas. And then throughout the month, whenever ideas come up and tasks and I'm like, oh, I need to like organize this or I need to do this. I've already decided what I'm doing in August. And so unless there's like ample time and capacity and energy, I'll just put that onto the parking lot list to revisit next month. I do also do a bit of a monthly reset for finances, which I do in a software called YNAB, You Need a Budget. Unfortunately, I did it a little earlier this month and didn't record it, but if you want that included in the next monthly reset, let me know. I'm back laying down <laughs> where I belong, but I was just thinking about how I used to create a lot more like goals and like wake up at 6 a.m. and work out X amount of times and like change your food patterns and all of these things and over time I've really kind of chilled on it because I find that the things that I really truly want to prioritize will happen and kind of just taking some pressure off actually is really helpful for me. In August, I want to really prioritize acceptance, compassion, and just like meeting myself where I'm at, wherever that is, and reminding myself that things always work out. So really staying grounded in the present and just kind of taking it a day at a time. And that feels really easy to say while I'm like laying out here in nature with like the stream underneath me and like I feel really calm and peaceful right now. So yeah, I also, I'm gonna try to come out into nature a little bit more than I have. Oh, one more thing. <laughs> this is like the most like all over the place reset. I'm sorry, if you want like a super hyper organized version, that's just never gonna be me. <laughs> one other thing that I'm gonna add to my list right now actually is keep up with my garden. And last month I started the garden and I got it like all set up but I have a whole video on it and so yeah I just really want to keep up with that it's been really fun it's doing really really well I ended up talking way too long about my gratitude list <laughs> so I cut that section out but feel free to pause and read this list lessons 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 I feel like I always just learn these over and over again so writing them down helps memorialize them one I always feel better after dancing and movement. My brain never wants to do it, like ever. I don't know why it hasn't gotten the memo, but it hasn't. So I need to override it and just do it because it always makes me feel better. Crying helps. I tend to be kind of like on the hypo aroused world in terms of crying but over time as I've moved through a lot of trauma I've started crying a lot more which feels really healing and really good I cried in therapy I've only cried like a handful of times in like three years and so it felt really good to release and it was just like oh yeah I feel better after crying and just like feeling my feelings so another lesson that I learn over and over a reminder to be patient because low lows pass. I'm very cyclical. I go through highs and I go through lows. And whenever I'm in a low, it just feels so like, am I ever gonna get out of this? 
and then I can get into like resistance so just like settling into the low doing what I can and knowing it'll pass really focusing on what is not what if so staying in the present staying grounded in what's actually happening not what I'm scared is going to happen and then lastly <laughs> the lesson that I learned again is I love visits and they always take a lot out of me so I will not not have visitors because it like makes my whole life and I loved having my parents here and I can't wait to have more visitors and the week leading up to it I'm in this like anticipatory zone that just kind of like throws me off and then the week plus after it I'm like recalibrating recharging re-getting momentum and I never think it's gonna take that long but it like pretty much always does so moving forward I want to try to really try to account for that because it doesn't seem like much that I do is gonna change it so we're gonna just try to accept it and and work with it <laughs> those are my gratitudes and my lessons i would love to hear if you have anything you're grateful for or any lessons that you have learned this past month in the comments <laughs> Wow, it felt really good to do this and to get kind of like ahead of it. I typically do these resets with my community, the Collective Empowerment Group, and I facilitate this process where we kind of all get together and do it together. And I love doing it with everyone, but it was actually really nice for me to kind of do it on my own. Okay, I just got back from my little reset in the forest and as I emerged from the forest, capitalism hit me and I decided I wanted to do a monthly favorites because consumerism is sometimes fun. So some of these things will be money, some of them won't. None of them are sponsored, but I just wanted to share a few fun things with you that I loved in the month of July. Favorite book in July has been The Court of Thorn and Roses. I'm gonna pop it right here so you can see it and I'll link this and everything else in the description below. It's like fantasy, fairies, romance. If you're into that kind of thing, you definitely want to read this book. It was so good. It's a series. I think I'm on book three. My favorite podcast that I've been obsessed with and just have been listening to every episode in July is We Can Do Hard Things by Glennon Doyle. She also does it with her sister and Abby Wambach and so good, especially the episodes with the Loke on gender. Check it out. I have a lot of YouTube channels that I like, but I've probably mostly been watching Isabel Page. It just really inspires me to see the magic in life, and I just think she's such a talented filmmaker. She lives in a tiny house in the woods. She does a ton of her own cooking and foraging and like all of that kind of stuff. If that's your thing, definitely check her out. And then what else? TV. So. I have been watching two shows, one with my girlfriend and one on my own. The one I'm watching with my girlfriend is The Old L Word. So I came out as queer late in life, so I missed The L Word train and my girlfriend is like, it's a rite of passage, you've gotta watch it. So we've been watching that and I'm, I think we're on season four. And if you're queer and you haven't seen it, I you gotta watch it. You just, you just have to, you just have to. <laughs> And then I've also been watching, and I'm so embarrassed to tell you this, but I've been watching The Secret Life of the American Teenager. <laughs> I'm on like a teen drama kick. I don't really know what it is. I think I just like things that can like shut your mind off. And I love Shailene Woodley, so I wanted to check it out. It took me like a season to get into it. And now in the second season, I'm like, okay, this is good. I think if you're wanting something that's just like totally mindless and just like chill to have on in the background to like soothe your nervous system and you like teen dramas, if you don't, don't watch it. You like teen dramas, check it out. If that's not your thing, just pass on it. <laughs> um, clothing, my favorite clothing item is by far, I mean, it's the only clothing item I've got in July, but is definitely my new Tevas. They are so cute, so comfortable. I almost went with the Doc Martens because I really liked how they looked, but I found the Tevas to be more comfortable. So I've been wearing them and going for really long walks in them. So, so, so highly recommend. And then food. Okay, so many things. So I eat predominantly gluten-free and predominantly dairy-free for some of my health issues. So I have been really obsessed with Quinn pretzels. So just the regular pretzels, they've got peanut butter filled ones and cheesy filled ones. And they've just been like such an easy snack to grab and they taste 
freaking amazing and yeah especially if you're dairy free and or gluten free you want to check these out i love them and then i had to mention a second food because i'm such a foodie s'mores are like my favorite dessert but i can never have them when i'm out because the gluten and all of the things so i have been putting just like okay so i use the lily's brand dark chocolate chips and i've been getting like a little container like a glass tupperware that you can put in the oven layering the bottom with a little bit of the lily's chocolate chips and then putting these vegan marshmallows on top just like the little ones but you could do whatever marshmallows in whatever size you want one layer of chocolate one layer of marshmallows and then i've been baking it in the toaster oven for maybe like five minutes or so on 375 just keep an eye on it like you don't want the marshmallows to burn so just kind of experiment and then the marshmallows get all toasted and so good and then i've been dipping these like gluten-free graham crackers i'm spacing on the brands but i'll put it here dipping it in it and like eating it they're like these little graham crackers that are like tiny little crackers you have to try it. Whether you're gluten-free, dairy-free, use whatever graham crackers and marshmallows and chocolate pleases you. But if you like s'mores and you're not out by a campfire all the time, trust me on this one and let me know if you try it and you will thank me later. <laughs> okay, um, skincare. I have been using Ilia Super Serum. It is a sunscreen. It has hyaluronic acid. It has so many good things for your skin and it's also a tinted moisturizer. So that's like the only thing I use on my skin. I use it every morning to just like get in that sunscreen. It's all together. I can't do a process with like 10 different things so it feels so soft just kind of the like slight tinted moisturizer just kind of like evens out your skin a little bit in a really natural and glowy way i could not recommend any more so good and then also i got a sample of an rms beauty the rms beauty brand straight up mascara and it was so good it is like an all natural same with Ilya, all natural all organic like really high quality products and actually i'm not sure if they're organic but they're really natural and really good for sensitive skin that mascara this sample was so good i bought a full tube of it and it is the best natural mascara I've ever used. It doesn't come under your eyes too much like a lot of natural ones I, I usually find do and it just works really well. I've got a little bit of it on right now. <laughs> So highly recommend that. I've tried like a million natural mascaras, so trust me on this one. And then finally, my favorite mental health tool this month has been doing a course in something called CBT School, an ERP exposure and response prevention course, where I've been really tracking a lot of my anxiety. So if you are someone who deals with anxiety, I have been able to learn so much from ERP in general, but this course, which is self-guided, has been life changing for me. So I'll link that in case you're interested. And that is a wrap on the monthly favorites. I hope some of those are exciting to you. And if you try anything, please let me know. I'll see you all next week. And I can't wait to do a reset again next month. Don't forget to, to like and subscribe and chat with me in the comments. And I'll see you next week. Mwah.